Anything that makes you more stealth I like, and that's why I like using Subsonics. These good bastards in Australia, they sent me this 22 here, and I've been using it with all the young fellas I've taken out over the years. Car tube's not the best for a slingshot, there's the pouch there, but it does work, and that's what I used to hunt rabbit with. When you rely on something for a food source and you're hungry, you do get good at it. But what's a lot easier day? Well, that's using a rifle, and that's what we can do right now. Right, well, that's the setup for filming. We've got the director's view on, and we've got it zoomed in as far as we can. I just wanted about to bring you guys a really close view as to what I can see to make it more interesting for you. We'll see where you go. Time is seven o'clock at night, Friday night. People going home from work or the pub by now, I suppose. And it's that time when animals also move around. I've no idea how this director's view is going to work because if I lift this up to my eyes like that, you're not going to really see the top of my head unless I correct it. So, not the perfect setup of what I've got. That's the direction I want to shoot in. And I've also got this cover here of these trees. And you'll see this grass through the trees there. And this is where I can actually spy a rabbit or a hare. I actually want to get a rabbit, I don't want to shoot a hare. Because I want to make rabbit casserole. You can see a good fat rabbit on my neighbour's property, but we can't even point the rifle at that to show you. Actually two. That's always the way, they're always on someone else's property. Two fat rabbits right in the middle of the driveway there. They'll hop over the paddock. There's no shortage of them, that's for sure. Good tucker. Can you guys see the rabbit on the rise there? Well, it's got my neighbour's land right behind it, so I can't take that shot. He's just run off now. This is a fucking difficult place to shoot. Got a whole bunch of pine cuttings. This crap here. Spotted a rabbit. There's two there, actually. I don't think you'll be able to see them on the camera. Through the bushes. So we've got a rabbit down there. There he goes. Yeah. 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 It's full grown, but I wouldn't call it a massive rabbit. But from this angle here, it looks big. This setup with the rifle like that there, not not great difficult to shoot with and I haven't even looked at the footage but I'm pretty sure that you guys couldn't see the view that I could see. Still that is something that we can eat. Every animal which I take for eating I never take them lightly even if it's just a rabbit and people go oh it's just a rabbit but it's not just a rabbit still was a life. I know they're classed as a pest but to me it's a food source it's a food for my dogs, it's a food for my children, food for me. Rabbit's very low in fat I like meat with more fat on it but I'll still take it and eat it but you know just like me this rabbit had to eat, had to shit. It probably had another rabbit mate when it did because it sort of hop away. And uh, had a life, felt the sun on its back in the morning and enjoyed living. And I've taken its life so I can have food. And so my children can have food, my friends can have food. And I do appreciate and don't take it lightly. Every animal has a right to be here, but it also has a right to end up in my belly because I am an apex predator. Just the same as the wolf takes the rabbit for eating. We are apex predators and we are at the top of the food chain. The thing I have about killing is it should be done humanely and it should be done with purpose and it should be done with respect to the animal and it shouldn't be wasted. I won't waste any of this. The dogs will chew on it, I'll chew on it, we'll all chew on it. And its life will go on and eventually one day I'll be gone just like this rabbit. Everything's got to die or something. A bullet to the head. Not a bad way to die really when you consider about how a lot of us humans die. In a hospital or a hospice getting skinnier and skinnier, wasting away with cancer or struggling to breathe with emphysema or having heart conditions causing ongoing pain. No, this guy here, he had a good life. He had a good death. Good boy. So Bruno's favourite part of the rabbit's always been the head. We're going to take that head off right now, but we're going to take it off without your nose being in it, eh, mate? Eh? Hey? Where you go? Come away. Where you go? Where you go? Where you go? Where you go? This could do with a sharpen. Bruno, come. Tell me, boy. In the box.
Bruno. Get up. Good boy. He will eat that in about five seconds. Listen to that. That is skull getting crunched and brains, teeth, everything. And it's really good for him because it's all the omega-3 of the brain, the good oils. Okay, maybe 10 seconds. This one's taking a bit longer. It's a bigger rabbit. But normally it's about five seconds. He's kind of chewing it like chewing gum. Normally it goes much faster. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to take, while he's doing that, I'm just going to take the feet off. Two front ones like this. Here you go, mate. You can have a foot. You've already eaten the head. Crunch it up too. Don't choke on it. You're right, mate. There's another one too when you're finished. So nothing's getting wasted here. And you can also take back legs, just the feet. Yep. You enjoy that, aren't you, mate, eh? There you go. There's another one. Eat up, Bruno. Eat up. I'll take this one off too. Love this knife. Thanks, Simon. So we've given Bruno the head and the feet in the time I'm filming here. And the skin will go to probably B. And pull it apart with my hands, just like this. And you can see, oh, we shoulder shot it. Oh, I thought we'd, we'd gone a bit lower. Okay, oh, well, that's all right. We've got all that beautiful meat there. Just going to take that straight off here. Yeah, we've got front legs. And we've got back legs. We've got all the back strap. We might have lost a wee bit in the shoulder. Oh, there's plenty of tucker there still. That's all right, that's good. Well, you don't often see B wagging his tail. But one thing he really loves is he loves a rabbit skin to chew on, don't you, mate? Yeah, there you go. You can have it. Yep, into his box. He loves it. He just loves it. And I know what you like too. You like rabbit guts, don't you? Yeah. That's this Poe. We've got plenty of that. Oh, Bruno's eye forever watchful, isn't it, mate, eh? We're going to get something. We're going to take this tail. We're just going to put it off like this. There it goes. It's gone. You get that, Bruno? There you go. Chew on that, mate. Got rabbit shit on it. That's the arsehole actually out, just one pull. Okay, what can we salvage from here? I don't think we can get a lot in the way of front legs, but we'll see how we go. Can take this one off straight down here and see what we got. I'd say it's pretty blooded. Just down to that joint there. Mm. Yeah, she's not looking flash. How's this side looking? They're both gonna be dog tucker, folks. Yeah, that one's dog tucker. You can see it's all like smashed right through. Hey, Poe. There you go, mate. Wrap your laughing gear around that. Good girl. Is that good, eh? That good. You're not even taking your box? Oh, that's a smart idea. And you still haven't had anything, mate. Neither's pace. Oh. We'll see how we go. You might get some guts if you're lucky. So rather than actually whip the guts out, what we're going to do is we're just going to take the leg straight off like this. Down here. Down there. Almost like a, a chicken leg. Break that back. Bruno's going, yeah, I'll eat some more of that. No, you won't, Bruno, not for you. And in here, looks like a chicken drumstick, doesn't it? This one. Not for you, Bruno. Not for you, mate. Jeez, you're getting a bit bloody messy there, Clay. There's heaps of meat. Right, I popped the guts out of that, because uh, I didn't show you that, because YouTube doesn't like guts. Silly because it's part of meat and we all eat meat. It's taking this back strap out like this now. And it should be quite a bit of meat in that too because it's not a small rabbit. It's going to get my knife and get my fingers under here and peel us right off the ribs. Big back strap. Look at that. Oh yeah. Really good condition. Take a bit of skin under that fat with it. Or not. Yeah, it's in good nick. And I'm also going to keep these kidneys. Because they're good eating. It's, it's a reasonable bit of meat. And <laughs> the duck's trying to... I turned the camera around so you can see. Look. Duck is trying to get some, some rabbit out your mate, eh? This is for Ducky. Here, yeah, Ducky. Well, you, what are you? You're scared of it. Yeah. There you go. It's going pretty quick, didn't it? Yeah, rabbit. Fresh rabbit. So you end up with two back legs, and one front one, liver, and a couple of kidneys. And that, well, that's for you, mate.
Yep, you're the pup. You're gonna love that. You're gonna love that. There you go. If only we could harvest that energy and use it for something. Good dog, Pace. Well, it's day two, and I've taken this out of the fridge. It's got that sort of slightly sticky set feel about it. Looks good. Boiling some water. Smashing some salt in there. Gonna lower this down very carefully. Couple of legs, another one in there. Gonna poach those. And our one front leg. This is what shallots look like when they come out of the garden. And we've got some cherry tomatoes too. If you're wondering why I've got four of these, well, it's because some good bastard sent it to me and it's great for cooking. New Zealand avocado oil. Heating the pan, just nice and hot. Smash a bit of that in. While that's heating, let's just check out and see what's going on here. So no need to boil the tits off it, just poaching it lightly in there. And you can hear my avocado oil is nice and hot. Smoking hot, throw it in and run away. Beauty. Everything's happening. One thing that goes really well with wild game, mushrooms. Occasionally I buy meat and what I do is this one. It's Henderson's nitrate free bacon. Pace just heard the word bacon and got excited. Not for you Pace. It's a good handful. Things are starting to happen in here now. Getting a real nice mixture. Is that to serve satisfaction? 2020 Chardonnay? Fucking right it is man. Oh well who's some of that then, see what happens eh? Got the heat up. It's like the naked chef in here. It's not a pretty sight, I'll tell you. <laughs> when chefs talk about deglazing the pan with alcohol, I just think that alcohol, the only thing that actually glazes is my eyes when I've drunk a fair bit of it. So I never really understood that expression. But I can tell you one thing, as it's burning off that alcohol, it's smelling really good. How about that? Straight in. Boom. These little cherry tomatoes, they're called cherry bomb. I grew these this year, first time. And they have been such good value, they just explode in your mouth. Throw them on top. Holy shit, is anybody getting hungry yet? Because I sure as hell am. Damn. It's not the right though, but it's good enough for us. Yeah, mate, it's a hard life, isn't it, eh? All chopped up and a bit of salt. Lots of salt. Not lots of salt, eh? Heaps. Now, rabbits are real delicate, mate. So you don't want to put too many strong herbs on. Just going to get the salt all mixed up in that. How you doing, mate? Beautiful. How you doing mate? Beautiful. Right, we're going to make some space for the uh, main attraction of the show. Oh, that's looking really good. Medallions first in there and then we're going to put kidneys and then last of all liver. One kidney, two kidneys. Getting a bit of colour there and lots of fat splatters. Ow! On my belly. Turn that one off. Just keeping things moving here, nice and hot. Get in there. Like a nice bit of chicken. There goes our front leg. A little bit more of our avocado oil. Apple cider vinegar. How it looks, it's like chicken. Look how white it is. It just like, tastes slightly like chicken, but actually it's rabbit, it ain't chicken. I think it's time for a wee taste test. Tender. Dice liver in. The liver really doesn't need much at all. Bit of a quick fry in the pan like that. That's good. A bit more salt on it. Not too much. Make some pepper on it now. It's got a ranch juice. Cream. Lots of cream. Even more cream. Basil and parsley straight over the top, just like that. Not cut too much. Let that simmer for a couple of minutes. Come back to it and we'll serve up. Righty oh, it's had a couple of minutes to fuse together. How's it looking? Looking pretty damn good. We can serve up now. Also, it's good. Nice creamy mushrooms. 
Well, only yesterday it was running around a paddock, and today we're chewing it. You don't have to be a hunter to appreciate something like this. How tender was it in the end? Oh, absolutely delicious. Give it a crack. Just remember to poach your legs for maybe a couple of hours in water. That's what I gave it in total. Just simmering away to get it really tender so it falls a bit like that. You'll love it. Pace is down here trying to get into the act, don't you, mate? Also, add your parsley and your chopped up basil towards the end so you get that nice freshness in it. Mushrooms are so good with meat. It's a winner. It's an absolute winner. I wish I could share it with you guys. I wish someone could be here and sit down and eat it with me. It's so good. I used to say I'm being rude eating with my mouth full, but to be honest, it's impossible to make a cooking, chomping and chewing video without eating it and giving you a rundown how it tastes. So we're going to go back to just eating and talking. Hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck with your own hunting and cooking. Smash the like button if you're still with us. And we'll see you in the next video. Be good. Can't be good. Be careful. See you later.